Hey there, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we will learn all about the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors class of medications. So first, this is a picture of the renal tubule. I covered this, the different parts and functions in depth in my previous video, Introduction to Diuretics. So please check out that video before this video and the subsequent ones, link right above. The carbonic anhydrase inhibitors work at the proximal convoluted tubule, portion of the renal tubule. An easy way to remember this is when you list all the different classes of diuretics by alphabetic order, the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors will be first, just like how the proximal convoluted tubule is the first part of the renal tubule. Let's learn about what happens at the PCT in normal circumstances, and then what happens after we give a patient a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, or CAI. So here is the PCT, and if we zoom in, this is how it will look. We have the inside of the tubule, the cells that line the tubule, and the blood. In normal circumstances, a few things are occurring here. First, sodium is moved from the urine into the cells and hydrogen ions are moved into the urine using the sodium hydrogen ion exchanger. The H plus ions or the hydrogen ions in the urine combines with the bicarbonate to form carbonic acid. This type of arrow means this reaction is at equilibrium and can shift back and forth, making either carbonic acid or bicarbonate and one hydrogen ion, depending on the body's needs. Carbonic anhydrase in the urine converts carbonic acid to water and carbon dioxide. Water and carbon dioxide enter the intracellular space by diffusion. The intracellular carbonic anhydrase enzyme converts water and carbon dioxide back to carbonic acid, which dissociates into H plus ions and bicarbonate. Bicarbonate then moves into the blood. Now, when we give a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, they inhibit the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. Now, please pay attention here. This inhibition leads to a decrease in carbonic acid formation. That means there will be a decrease in the formation of hydrogen ions and bicarbonate. If there is a decrease in hydrogen ions, that means there will be less hydrogen ions available to exchange with the sodium from the lumen of the tubule into the cells. This will lead to a buildup of sodium in the lumen of the tubule, and as we know, water follows sodium, so then we get the diuresis effect. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are considered weak diuretics because most of the sodium in the urine will eventually be reabsorbed at the or the DCT. In clinical practice, the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are more recognized for the treatment of glaucoma, where there is damage to the optic nerve because of a buildup of aqueous humor. The carbonic anhydrase enzyme is inhibited in the eyes to reduce the production of the aqueous humor. It's also used for managing patients with elevated intracranial pressure, which is caused by many things, including the buildup of the cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF. That's around your brain and spinal cord. The carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are able to reduce the production of the CSF. Now, the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are also used for altitude sickness, which is caused by lower oxygen levels at high altitudes. This occurs when a person ascends too rapidly. Mild symptoms of this include headache, vomiting, insomnia, and nausea. More severe presentation includes cerebral edema and pulmonary edema. Now, because there is less oxygen at those levels, your body will increase your breathing rate with the goal of inhaling as much oxygen as possible. This unfortunately causes you to breathe out a lot of carbon dioxide, which is acidic, making your body's pH more basic. Because this change in the pH is caused by the respiratory system, we call this phenomenon respiratory alkalosis. This would normally be compensated by the kidney excreting bicarbonate and causing compensatory metabolic acidosis. But this mechanism takes several days. A more immediate treatment is using a carbonic and hydrase inhibitor, which will reduce the amount of bicarbonate that is reabsorbed into the blood. Although not included here because it's not common in practice, the carbonic and hydrase inhibitors have been utilized to manage edema associated with heart failure and also epilepsy. Here are some examples of drugs in the class. Acetazolamide, metazolamide, 
and the eye drops brenzolamide and dorzolamide. And of course, the eye drops are for glaucoma, but the oral agents can also be used for glaucoma. If you're still watching this video and you think I'm doing a good job teaching this topic, then all I ask for is for you to hit the like button and I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Next, we have the adverse effects. Taste the disturbances. So patients may complain of a bitter aftertaste, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. A good way to remember these side effects is to think about the carb and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. It makes me think of carbs like rice, bread, etc. Because it's food that you eat, think of side effects related to the GI system, right? So bitter aftertaste, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Other adverse effects include blurred vision, tinnitus, paresthesia, hypokalemia, which occurs because at the proximal convoluted tubule, the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors will do their job and now all the sodium and water moves into the tubule. It travels down the tubule. When it gets to the distal convoluted tubule, most of the sodium in the filtrate will be moved into the blood in exchange for potassium. So potassium will then leave the blood and enter the tubule. Therefore, less potassium in the blood and so we get hypokalemia. These drugs can also cause a granulocytosis. And a good way to remember this is back to the CARB acronym. So think of rice. Rice is granular, agranulocytosis. Lastly, they can cause kidney stones, and this is due to alkalinization of the urine, resulting from increased bicarbonate excretion, and this can promote formation of calcium oxalate kidney stones. Lastly, we have some general precautions to consider. First, you want to avoid the use in hepatic disease, such as cirrhosis or impaired hepatic function. The liver injury caused by these agents is a rare side effect, but there have been several case reports. Because these agents work in the the kidneys, you want to avoid using patients with renal impairment. Depending on the cranial clearance, dosing adjustments may be required. Next is the downside of using diuretics, electrolyte imbalances. So you want to abstain from using these agents in patients with hypokalemia, hyponatremia, and metabolic acidosis due to the loss of the bicarbonate. The backbone of the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor's chemical structure is a sulfonamide, and therefore you should not use them in patients with hypersensitivity to sulfur or sulfonamide type drugs due to the risk of fatal anaphylactic shock. Finally, patients with a history of serious drug-induced rashes should not take these agents because of an increased risk of developing Steven Johnson's syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. An easy way to remember to assess for any drug-induced rash with these agents is back to the same example of how the name has carb in it. So we think about rice, bread, etc. Simple sugars, right? These are simple sugars. So carbs, carbs or rash or rush into the bloodstream, right? Because it's a simple sugar. That will be the end of this video. Make sure to turn your bell notification on so you get the alert for the next video on loop diuretics. Follow me on these social media platforms. Thank you for watching this video and take care.